Hello and welcome to our lesson. I'm Professor Wool. Today we're going to be talking about using next generation firewalls for cyber threat prevention. So in one of our previous lessons we talked about next generation firewalls and how they let us filter based on very specific applications um, and we talked about the blacklisting versus whitelisting approach. Here in this example you can see a partial blacklisting rule base where uh, we're specifying the particular applications that we're concerned about and explicitly blocking them and then we have a broader allowing rule for web traffic that we want to allow. So this is sort of a uh, blacklisting approach. Um, and the limitation of a blacklisting approach in general is that it runs the chance of becoming obsolete and out of date because new uh, cyber threats occur every day of the week and so just blocking one undesirable is not good enough you need to keep the list updated and if you're not aware of the cyber threats you don't know what to block so you run the chance of being at risk more than you want to be uh, now to address this problem and still let us get uh, a good value out of a blacklisting approach what the next generation firewall vendors have done is that they offer an update service or an update subscription that basically if you subscribe to it you get periodic updates to your next generation firewall definitions basically you get uh, signatures and definitions for a great number of applications especially all the malicious ones um, from the firewall vendor that has the expertise to identify them which means that your next generation firewall has a continuously updated list of things that you might want to block uh, and furthermore instead of requiring you to keep track you could also get a categorization so instead of in listing individual bad applications one by one you could just specify a broad category name uh, like bad uh, and then that category would keep getting updated by the vendor all the time and so this one uh, uh, dropping rule will drop all the applications that fall into the bad category giving you much better protection and uh, um, you're, you're not limited by the blacklisting approach because you are getting the latest information all the time. So this is great uh, and you get your next generation firewall constantly being updated with definitions of new applications and especially the malicious ones. However, this is not everything that the next gen firewall is doing for us and there are some limitations that we might need to think about. In particular, there are these homegrown applications that your IT department is writing locally and pretend that you have from your web farm to your data center, there's a necessity of communication between these two sites. Uh, the web farm needs to access the data center for something and it uses some kind of web service API, so a, a SOAP based API or a REST based API and this, the internals of that protocol are designed by your internal IT staff which means that the next gen firewall vendor knows nothing about the specifics of that communication and therefore the updates that you're subscribing to do not give you the definitions of that application, that homegrown application you still need to filter it and allow it in your firewall. So to do that, you're fundamentally back to a traditional firewall approach. You have to write something like uh, uh, where the traffic is coming from, where it's going to, and then instead of an application definition, which you don't really have, you're reduced to writing a rule allowing the traffic using services and ports. So now you have a challenge of what to put in the service definition. If this is indeed a web service application then by default it would be using web service ports so again HTTP, HTTPS are the default ones but those are very very broad uh, and you might not want to have such a rule allowing web traffic all unfiltered all categories of web traffic from your web farm to your data center so you have a challenge because the vendor is not helping you, you need to do it on your own but you don't really have a way to characterize the internals of the traffic and it's using a broad 
and difficult to filter port. So probably the best approach here is to use a non-default port and tell your developers not to use the default but to use some made up port just for this just so that you can filter that traffic based on the port in a way that is more reliable and more specific than just allowing all, all traffic through something like HTTP or HTTPS. That's what we have today. Thank you for your attention.